Today in the Jeep will spotlight something different, something a little bit unusual on the channel. Yeah, it's not a meter, it's not a test equipment, it's actually a radio. It's a mini radio. The ETS Mini in the spotlight. And a big shout out to Banggood. Thanks so much for sending the radio in for this review. Awesome. Wow, some fast shipping from Banggood. This thing came here over the pond in literally no time. This cool looking little tiny mini radio, man, it is built. Uh, it is long wave, it is short wave, uh, broadband, VHS, you name it, everything here. FM radio, oh yeah, that and a whole lot more. Ships with two things, the unit itself as well as this loop antenna. Also, you get a tiny little USB cable in the box and a very small mini radio quick start manual that's it that's all it comes with that nice screen protector let's just get rid of that and wow look at that amn volt and yeah believe it or not this is actually 3d printed uh go figure but i have seen some pretty lousy 3d prints of this uh, on other reviews and i gotta say this one is very nice uh doesn't look shoddy at all yeah you can tell it's 3d printed just because you've kind of got that uh, finish on it but it looks like um a really good uh 3d printing job all around so uh yeah i gotta say by the way that's the on off switch right there Lots of functionality, it has the long band, middle band, shortwave bands, AM, FM, uh, shortwave, long wave, VHF, uh, the list goes on. So, you know, I mean, if you're into listening to stuff, uh, definitely check this out. And look at that gorgeous IPS screen, 1.9 inches, uh, 8 centimeters by 3 centimeters and uh, 2 centimeters thick. And once again, it's made from that 3D printed plastic. I'd hate, hasten to say probably PLU as opposed to PLA. That's just the impression I get. So it's going to be a little bit more robust. Shouldn't crack if you drop it. Um, so decent quality plastics considering the type of housing this is for. Has one USB-C charging port. And also you can do firmware updates. Now there's a lot of talk on the net about this radio. Lots of different firmware out there. Things you can and can't do. Maybe you should do, maybe you shouldn't do. I'll leave that up to you. I'm not going to go into all the nuance that you can do with this tiny little mini radio that being said I'll look at the basics of what it does and how good does it do it and you know I'll let you form your own impressions to control the stations we have this really nice little attenuator so to get into the sub menu just push twice quickly and from here you can go ahead and make those setting changes really easy and it's very tactile and I gotta say, for a uh, you know control, I, I like it. Um, it's a fairly large size tuning selector, and it, it's it's really easy to control. Just one hand, as you can see, what I'm doing here, uh, no problem whatsoever. This is an SMA male to BNC female. That's what you're going to need to hook up to this guy. Now, if you do have a whip antenna, and believe it or not, I actually got one for this review. Unfortunately, it was the wrong size. Um, so I decided to just go ahead and do the review. But you can order those whip style antennas if you want to get better uh, reception. The frame antenna or donut antenna, whatever you want to call it, it's actually pretty well made. Uh, made from fiberglass uh, with a printed turned coil onto the PCB. Not sure how many rounds they've printed, but if you look carefully, you can definitely see those coils right on that PCB. Very end, it goes to a small SMA male style connector. 10 kilohertz to 180 megahertz uh, frequency range. Has a chargeable battery built in, thank goodness, and it stakes the standard USB-C. Thank goodness again. Also, we have a charging status indicator, and that is on the other side of the unit. If I remember which side, there it is. So that little hole will actually be red, uh, glowing red when you're charging the unit. When it's done charging, the light just goes out. Also in the back of the unit, we have a little cutout there for the speaker itself. And once again, the quality isn't too bad. I mean, honestly, if you're camping around the woods or the sticks, really, um, without headphones, I think it's still really usable. Outside, you can see the screen is really easy on the eyes. It's a bright, hot, sunny day. And, you know, totally readable. 
we don't have any um, any issues distinguishing. Now, it can get a little faded if you're really in that direct sunlight, but overall, generally speaking, I think that uh, menu is very easy on the eyes outdoor. It's the USB-C, and of course, that little embedded speaker. And once again, that embedded speaker is not bad. I mean, it's not going to blow you away, but it will definitely do the trick. The one thing I notice is that battery. Uh, it doesn't last uber long. We're talking about maybe three hours tops, so take note of that. Here we are with the charger plugged in, and uh, there you can see drawing 0 0.068 of an amp while it's charging. Minuscule at best, and uh, takes about two hours to get a full charge. Take note, this little tiny radio is subject to interference. Uh, yeah, loud whining sound, turn off that portable USB fan, and boom, that whining noise went away. Here we are on the inside. Now this is revision two, version two, whatever you want to call it, version two of this radio. Quite a few noticeable improvements. Um, I'll t go through them as we take a look at the uh, uh, components. Let's start off with the one I'm pointing at right now. That is the uh, broadcast AM, FM, shortwave, long wave, radio receiver, the SI4732A10. I believe that's from Skyworks. So basically it's the broadcast tuner and receiver function uh, from the antenna input to the digital audio output. So that is an important chip now on board. Another cool feature with the version 2 is the fact that you've got that onboard LM4809 uh, amplifier over at the top right, just beside the antenna right here. Uh, more improvements on version 2 as well, looking at them right now. 1 and 2 reset buttons uh, not included in version 1. And over here at the uh, right-hand side, that is the infamous on-off switch. Probably my biggest full pass so far with the updated version 2. Really wish they'd make that a little more robust. And of course, we have the SP32 itself, version S3, and uh, yeah, some really goodness audio-wise in this chip. This is a really powerful chip too. 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi and Bluetooth combo built into it. Um, so maybe we'll see some Bluetooth on board as well at some point. It uh, utilizes that uh, low power consumption uh, TSMC uh, tech. Anyway, it's, it's a great chip and uh, wow, what a nice piece of tech for an inexpensive radio. Like I said, I took off those uh, two pin connectors, one attaching the speaker, the other the battery. Um, I believe on version one, the battery was actually just soldered on. There was no two pin connector at all. As well, uh, we'll take a closer look right now, but that battery, um, not the battery rather, the speaker is new and improved. So much better speaker now uh, on the version two of this radio. Here we are with that uh, 800 milliwatt hour, 3.7 volt, 
rechargeable battery. Like I said, battery life wasn't that thrilled with, unfortunately, but I mean, oh, what can you do? I do like that speaker, though, considering the small size, it really does pack a punch in terms of, uh, you know, it's not going to be an, an audiophile's, uh, you know, um, best book, but hey, I think for what it does, it puts out some pretty good sound. All right, let's wrap it up, give you my final thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Amen Volt ATS Mini Tiny radio that does it all long wave short wave bands galore um you know i'm gonna recommend it but with a little bit of hesitation it is a really cool little device and if you're camping take this with you and you're gonna get a lot of reception that is if you're close to some standard am bands if you need long wave short wave what have you you're gonna need a whip antenna at best or a longer one uh, at the very best if you want to get those shortwave channels. Now, I didn't have a time to go ahead and stick this to the roof, so to speak. I'm sure reception would have been way better, but as it stands, you definitely need an external antenna to get the most out of this device. Another snafu is the fact that this takes up a lot of juice. I mean, for some reason, it consumed that battery in no time. You're looking at around two to three hours, at least in my experience, for a battery life. Not a heck of a lot. But man, oh man, is this thing tiny, compact, and it can really do the trick. Hey, it's cheap, it's effective, and if you have a whip antenna lying around, it just might be a steal of a deal. The AMN Volt Mini Radio gets a solid 3.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.